product creep. Product creep is mainly when you have a business idea that's working, doing well. Um, for example, say you were doing web design and you suddenly thought, well, this is going well, let's expand it out a little bit. You start getting people go, can you do the graphic design? Oh, yeah, I can do the graphics for you. Uh, can you do as an Android app as well? Yeah, I can do that. And you end up with lots and lots of these little projects spurring off that take you away from your main business. But also, because there's a steep learning curve with each one, the other bits may not be profitable because it will take you a period of time to get to a standard that actually makes any money. So, are you better off investing in what you're doing already uh, rather than expanding it out? I would say nine times out of 10, the answer is yes, unless what you're doing isn't actually that viable. Uh, for example, if you're selling to a specific audience a specific thing and there is no other audience to absorb into it, then you need to expand your products, but also keeping it within that same sort of remit. So it, it, it's to the same people, but a different product slightly. Like I same with the, if you're doing like a web design and then start doing uh, things like web developing, development where you're developing their sites or you're doing the web security on the back end or doing the hosting, you know, something that's very linked to it but not too expansive. When you start doing graphics design, template design and other bits and pieces and you start expanding it out, it's where you start losing time and money. So a business could become not very viable in a very short period of time if you expand it out too much. And this is why it's important to keep focused on what you're doing um, and not get too carried away because a client wants this or a client wants that. We all want something for Christmas. doesn't mean we're going to get it this year. Um, and I would personally look, if somebody wants a specific thing that I don't actually do, I would look at somewhere like Fiverr or people you already know. For example, here in Spain, I've got Gordon that actually writes articles. Um, I've got Andrew that does uh, web development, web hosting, and several other web-related things. But he's on the more on the technical side, where Gordon's more on the writing side. So there's a couple of unique skills there. And then graphics, design, I've got people in the Philippines that can do it. So I try to outsource those little bits, um, and that's the easiest way of doing this sort of thing. It's good to develop a few ideas, but not get carried away um, when you've got resources there that would quite help ha happily take the extra business from you. You're trying not to increase your used time without increasing your income. Otherwise, it sort of defeats the object because if you're using all your time up and not actually making any money on it it's a wasted journey um, unless it's a long term goal but even then you want to try and expand out what you know rather than constantly gaining new knowledge and experience on 101 things where you'd be better off with your time invested in what you're good at thanks for watching